Welcome back. Last week we talked about chemical and physical conditions and competition and how those factors can affect evolution of living things. So how they can make living things change over time. In this video we're going to talk about the next syllabus dot point which says students will plan, choose equipment or resources and perform a first-hand investigation to model natural selection. So before we start we need to go over what that word natural selection, what that meant. And natural selection was just nature or the environment selecting organisms, that was anything that's living, that are best adapted to its to it or best, best suited to that environment. So it's another word that's survival of the fittest. So whichever species or whichever member of a species is best fitted to its environment is the fittest. So if we go back to the example we had in the last video about the pep pepper moth in Britain. So before the Industrial Revolution, they were mostly white because they could hide at the buildings and hide at the trees because they were mostly white as well. Whereas the black ones were easily eaten and easily seen and easily eaten. And after revolution, after all that coal and dust came, it started to make the buildings black and the trees black. And now the white ones had nowhere place to hide, whereas the black ones could hide. So the white ones were eaten. So in this case, if you look at you know, the word natural selection, nature selecting f for something, we're not saying that in this case you now the, the trees, uh, the, the moths are, you know, the nature says you, you guys survive and the black ones you die. What's actually happening is nature makes it more likely that one survives compared to the other. So in, in this case, the first case, we had the bird who eats those moths, he's going to be more likely to see the black ones than the white ones because the white ones have camouflage. So the white ones here are the fittest or the ones that are best suited to the environment. But afterwards, once everything changes, the environment changes, nature changes. Now the white ones die because the white ones have no place to hide and the black ones can camouflage and hide at the buildings and hide at the trees. So now the black ones are the fittest. The black ones are ones that nature selects. Right? So it's kind of these small variations, that word variations is important. And that's just slight differences. All species, there's no species the same, just like there's no human being that's, that is the same. We're all slightly different. And in this case, the only slight difference there might be between these um, butterflies, these moths, is their color of their skin, uh, color of their wings. Right? But that might be enough for some to survive and some to um, die. So the ones who will then survive will reproduce and reproduce. So in this case, the white ones die off and the black ones reproduce and reproduce. And it's going to be more and more black ones because they just keep surviving because the birds can't see them properly. Right? So that was natural selection. If nature somehow makes it more likely that one species or one part, like one trait or one variation survives, and that, that person, that member of that species can then reproduce and make it more and more of its kind. So it, we're asked to model natural selection. So what I thought we'd do is we just use a model. It doesn't have to be realistic. It just has to be able to be some way that we can show how natural selection works and make that maybe um, make it more easier to understand, I guess. So models are just used to make it easier to understand. So what I've chosen here is um, 25 Smarties. So you can imagine that Smarties come in different colors. And the different colors determine what flavor it is. So I've got maybe five, so I've got 25 Smarties in total, five of each of these colors. So five strawberry, five orange, five blueberries, five green apple, and five lemon. And we've got five boys. We've got Frank, Jack, Tom, Matt, and Sam. And each of those five boys, they get to eat four Smarties, which means by the end we should have five left over. All right, so we can start, we can see uh, each will have their favorites, so we'll just say, you know, Frank starts, he eats one, and then Jack, the next one, eats, and then the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and so on. So they just keep eating the favorite ones, right? So you might already be noticing a pattern. The green one seems to be eaten less frequently. Right? So they're all having their favorites. They're all picking their favorites. Maybe towards the end, um, one of the boys says, okay, I want to try green apple, and he eats a green apple as well. So now we have 25 Smarties initially, we have 20 of them being eaten, and we look at which ones are left over. So now we can see there's one green apple, two, three, four. So there's four um, green apples that have survived the eating frenzy. And we have maybe one 
lemon as well. That's all we have. All the other ones were eaten. Now, how does that? How does that help us to understand natural selection? Now, if you can imagine these smarties not being smarties, but being maybe um, bugs, insects, and these five kids not being kids, but maybe being um, birds. The only difference between these insects might be the way they smell. So you might have four that smell normal. And the green apple, we can say the green apple is a smelly a smelly bug, right? So a smelly bug. So if those birds choose which one they want to eat, they would obviously eat all the ones who who smell normal and they eat the ones that smell really bad. It's the smelly bugs, they smell it last. And they smell it last. they eat it last. Right? So they try to leave them over because they don't want to eat them if they could eat a different one instead. The same as these boys who would choose their favorite one and obviously green apples weren't the favorite ones and I think that's probably in many cases green apples' is least favorite flavor. So the green apples are left over. And if this happens over and over again, then we're going to have more and more green apples and the green apples are going to be taken. Like we're going to, there's going to be so many green apples that um, they're going to be the by far the dominant one. Right? So again, if we look at, if we compare green apples and we say, okay, they're not, they're not green apples, they're smelly bugs, and these boys are not boys, they're birds, then after a while, these smelly bugs will be more and more of these smelly bugs, and less and less of the normal smelling bugs. And after a few generations, then all the bugs will be smelly. So the smelly bugs takes over. And the reason why is because um, they're not the favorite food they might be uh, they might be smelly I mean you don't want to eat a smelly bug if you can avoid eating a smelly bug so that's how natural section works like if there's something that makes you some variation a tiny variation again these smarties might be all the same calories that might all have the same chocolate in it except for like a tiny flavoring which makes it different but a small variation can be, have a big impact in terms of what happens to you so same yeah with those smarties you can compare the smarties but you can replace smarties with the smelly bugs and the normal smelling bugs and you have a pretty good model or a pretty good um, way to understand natural selection so natural selection itself happens because um nature or is somehow selects certain organisms to be better adapted to that that environment than other organisms so hope that made sense